The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's see how things are going with The Great Gildersleeve. Not so well, apparently. Found it. Nuts. That's the third time this week. <clears throat> darn car. Makes me so darn mad I'd like to give it a good kick in the old oh, chassis. Are you back? Yeah, what's the matter, huh? The darn car won't start. Is that you, Mr. Gillespie? I'm sure glad I caught you before you got away. Well, you caught me, Bertie, but that doesn't exactly make you Frank Buck. The car wouldn't start. <laughs> Is that a fact? Well, I just wanted to remind you, we need some meat for lunch, Mr. Gillespie. But if the car won't start, I can warm up the lamb stew again. Lamb stew? I'll start it if I have to blast it, Bertie. <laughs> Doorbell! I'll answer it. It's probably Ben. Ben? Well, just what we need. Natural-born mechanic. Uncle Mort, Ben and I have plans of our own. Hello, Bertie. Anybody home? Yes, sir. She's right here in the parlor. Oh. Hi, folks. Hello, Marge. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Hello, Ben. Am I glad to see you. Oh, thanks. Say, is that Mr. Bullard's car over there across the street, that new one? It's a 46, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pip, huh? He was the first man in Summerfield to get delivery. Oh, I should think he got the Congressional Medal. He's got so stuck up over it. Look at it. Parked there in front of his house so everybody will see it. That's a beaut, though. He must have pull or something to get it. He's not so much. I'm thinking of getting a new car myself. Unky, really? No kidding? Very possible. Where are you going to find a new car these days? Don't worry, Ben. I've got my eye on a car that'll make Bullard's look sick. Where? Bullard isn't the only man in this town that has connections. In the meantime, of course, we're dependent on the old bus. Say, Ben, if you're not planning to do anything... Uncle Mort, you cut that out. My dear, what do you mean? <laughs> you're trying to get Ben to fix your car. I simply want to ask him a question. Ben is an expert. I value his opinion. What seems to be the trouble, Mr. Gildersleeve? Car won't start. Oh. Well, it's probably cold if you tried priming it. Priming it? Yeah. Just how do you do that, Ben? <laughs> Well, it's very simple. You just... Well, well, it would be easier to show you. Ben. Uh, what's the matter? The last time Unky got you to fix his car, it took two hours. And when you finished, you were so dirty you had to go home, remember? Well, this wouldn't be anything like that, honest. Oh, you make me sick. Marjorie. Then it's all your fault. Gosh. What's she so sore about? I'm afraid Marjorie sometimes forgets that the whole world was not constructed for her pleasure. She'll get over it. Uh, right out in the garage, Ben. Go out oh. the back way, if you like. Thanks, I'll... Guess I'll go out the back way. If you need any help, Ben, holler. Are you really going to buy a new car, Unc? I haven't made up my mind yet, my boy. I'm simply considering it. Gee, Mr. Bullard's car looks super. Wish we had it. I don't like to see signs of envy in you, my boy. Especially envy of other people's material possessions. Mr. Bullard has a new car. We have an old car, that's all. We have a broken down old car. We've spent a lot of pleasant hours in it. We should be thankful we have any car at all. Okay, I'm thankful. Just the same, it'd be nice to be rich like the Bullards. We're not poor, Leroy. I could buy a new car tomorrow if I wanted to. But I happen to think there are things more important than owning a flashy car. Yeah? Your education, for instance. I believe you're old enough to know that the war bonds I've been laying aside are intended to send you to college. Maybe I don't want to go. Oh, yes, you will. <laughs> You're taking the short view, my boy. College is very important. Where do you think I'd be today if I hadn't had a college education? You mean things might be even tougher? <laughs> things are not tough. I'm a prosperous man, relatively speaking. 
and I intend to send you to college. But if you don't show some signs of ambition pretty soon, I'll I'll blow the money on your sister. Unc! Well, watch it, that's all. What a character. <laughs> How's Ben coming out there? Well, he's got everything apart now. Oh, for heaven's sake. I told you he'd be all day. Now, don't be impatient, my dear. Doorbell, I'll go. Tell Ben to keep plugging out there, Leroy. Hey, Bertie, can I have an old rag and an apple? What for, Leroy? The old rag is for Ben, the apple's for me. Leela, well. Come in. I'm afraid I've come to ask another faith of you, Throckmorton. <laughs> well, come in anyway. <laughs> Seems like every time I come over here, it's to ask you for something. Aren't I terrible? As long as you keep coming, Leela, I don't mind. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> Child, I didn't see you standing there. Oh, yes, Marjorie. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just waiting for a friend. Yes, yes. Uh, Throckmorton, what I dropped in for, I don't suppose you happen to be driving downtown this morning by any possible time. Well, I'll tell you how it is, Leah. I wouldn't want you to make a special trip, understand? Well, I wouldn't have you do that for the world, but my hairdress is expensive. I'd be glad to take you, Leela, but I've been having a little trouble with the car. Trouble? It won't go. Oh, well, maybe I can ride down with Mr. Bullard. I see his car's out in front of the house. Maybe he's Now, wait a minute. My car will be fixed in just a minute, Leela. Ben's out there working on it right now. Isn't he, Marjorie? I'll say. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, as long as I'm not so late that Vera won't take me. Uh, have you seen Mr. Bullard's new car, Throckmorton? Yep. Isn't it just simply gorgeous? Stock model, there'd be millions of them. Oh, I think it's just stunning. I'd love to ride in it, wouldn't you? What for? The only thing that's different about it is the bumper. Under the hood, it's the same old car. Oh, but it's so new and so handsome. I don't know. Maybe it's just a weakness of mine. But I simply love high-powered motor cars. I like to get out on a country road with the top down and feel the wind racing through my hair. Don't you? I know something better than that. <laughs> what? Uh... Would you like me to go away? No, no, my dear. But haven't you something to do? something to do till you drove Ben out to the garage. Now, now, he'll be in any minute. Uh, I was telling Marjorie, Leela, that I've been thinking some of buying a new car myself. Have you really? Well, I suppose it takes months, unless you're someone important, like Mr. Bully. Well, I could get this one tomorrow if I made up my mind to buy it. Really? What kind of a car is it, Throckmorton? As white sidewall tires. I, I mean, what make? What make? Uh, it's a cord. A A cord. Are they good? Are they good? They're so good they stopped making them. <laughs> Before the war, even. But why in the world did they... They were too good for the average man. Oh. You really should see this baby, Leela. It's like... It's like new. 5,000 miles, then the owner was drafted. Long and low, with a top you can let down. Mm. Boy, if you like wind in your hair, you could have a picnic in this one. <laughs> oh, Sirach Martin, what... On picnics. Oh, we could go for long drives together in the country, just you and me. And I'd fix a little basket lunch. With fried chicken. With my famous fried chicken. And we'd stop in some nice, quiet place where there was a little brook, maybe. And I'd carry you across the brook, just like in the movies. <laughs> Marjorie. Don't worry, I'm leaving. Yes, yes. Goodness, I keep forgetting. Tell Ben if he should ever have the decency to come in, then he'll find me upstairs. Marjorie sounds a little upset. Yeah, they get that way. She'll forget it. Uh, where were we? Uh, you were carrying me across the brook, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, what would we do after that, Leela? Hmm? Well, we, we'd wander through the meadow picking cowslips, maybe. Violets. I'd rather pick violets. They smell nicer. Ah, no. Let's pick wild strawberries. Okay, wild strawberries. And, and after a while, when we were tired of picking strawberries, you know what we do? We'd eat them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. Hmm? No. No, we'd lie down side by side on the nice mossy ground and just look up at the sky and watch the pretty clouds drift by overhead. <laughs> <laughs> Big, soft, white clouds. So pretty. And then what would we do? We'd jump in your car and dash back to town. Oh. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, I'm glad you're giving up the old car. Well, now, wait a minute, Leela. I didn't say I've I was... never said anything about it, but I guess it's all right to now. I've always felt kind of funny driving around with you in that old car. But, Leela... I mean, it's more of a family type of car with all those things in the back seat, skates and all. I've been after Leroy to get those out of there. But about the new car, Leela, I was only thinking about that. Gosh, I don't know if I can even afford it. Oh, I see. Leroy? Yeah? How's Ben coming? With oh, the there's Mr. Bullard coming out of his house. He must be going downtown. Uh, Leroy, honey, run across the street and stop Mr. Bullard before he drives off, will you? Ask him if I might ride down with him. Well, now wait, Leroy. Run, Leroy. Okay. Leroy, how's Ben coming with the car? He's through. The car's okay. Well, wait a minute, Ben. Don't... My car is fixed, Leela. Ben's got it fixed. You don't have to go with Bullard. You can ride down with me. Oh, I wouldn't want to put you to any trouble. No trouble, Leela. I have to do some shopping for Bertie. Well, I'd crowd you. You have the car all full of groceries. Plenty of room in the front seat. I have to go anyway, Leela, please. Oh, well, you're sweet to ask me, Throckmorton, some other time, huh? At 10 I'll be right there, Leroy. I'll be right there. She... <laughs> She's ashamed. She's ashamed of me and my car. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going down there right now and have a demonstration. And we'll find out what happens in just a few moments. Mr. Lang, I was listening last week when you explained why parquet margarine is sometimes so hard to get in the food stores these days. Yes, even though Kraft is making all the parquet margarine it possibly can with limited supplies, there still isn't enough to meet the big demand. Mm, you're right about that big demand. Why, in my own family, there's a husband and two children who demand parquet at every meal. I've tried other brands of margarine. But only Parquet's flavor seems to satisfy them. That's what millions of families have discovered. Parquet's unmatched flavor has made it one of America's favorite spreads for bread. Believe me, I'm keeping a sharp lookout for every new supply of Parquet my dealer gets. That's a good idea, because Parquet is now an even more valuable food. Every pound is being fortified with 15,000 units of vitamin A. And every Kraft food dealer is getting a fair share of all the parquet margarine that's available. So please be patient when supplies are temporarily short. And remember to keep asking for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. And we find whizzing along in the family car with his nephew, Leroy. I'll bet when we get there, the barber shop will be full. Then you just wait your turn. There'll be a long line. Then you get on the end of it. Gosh. Hey, where are you going? The barber shop is on State Street. Never mind where I'm going. <laughs> I'm stopping here for a minute. Oh, boy, is that the car lock? That one in the window? Are you going to buy it, huh? No, I'm merely going to see how much he wants for it. And if it's cheap enough, maybe? We'll see, Leroy. We'll see. Boy, that's some car. Now, remember, Leroy, I'm not here to buy it. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, 
Can I do something for you? Well, my name's Gildersleeve. I'm the water commissioner here in the city. I'd like to look over this car in the window, please. Commissioner Gildersleeve. Yes, sir. Uh, Larry Gans is the name. Uh, this is my nephew, Leroy. Mr. Gans. I see. Interested in automobiles, are you, young fella? Yeah. Well, you're going to look at a real automobile now. How do you open the doors? Look, Unc, no handle. Uh, just press the button, Sonny. You see? Well, I'll be darned. Hey, neat. Leroy, don't climb all over the upholstery. He can't hurt it, Mr. Gildersleeve. Real leather. And I mean leather. Just feel that. Feels like leather, all right. <laughs> what about the motor? You know, this is a special body job, Commissioner. The original body on the cord was good enough for most people, but this particular owner wanted something even better. Look at those lines. Low, isn't she? Yeah, she's low. Sure she doesn't drag a little. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, no, sir. It's all a matter of design. Leroy, don't do that. The boy can't hurt it. Horn cost the owner $150 in cold cash, believe it or not. Personally, I wouldn't want to tie up that much money in a horn, but that's the way he wanted it, so that's the way he had it. Yeah, yeah. What's under the hood, Mr. Gans? Uh, Commissioner, did I call your attention to this windshield heater? It's a mighty useful thing to have. Don't point that thing at anybody, Leroy. And don't monkey with everything. Oh, that's all right, Sonny. Pistol grip searchlight, they're fine when you're traveling. Well, I'm not planning any particular tours. I just want a car I can drive around here. Something dependable. Oh, this car's dependable, all right. Uh, uh, suppose you let your uncle slide in under the wheel there for a minute, Sonny. I, I want him to get the feel of the car a little. Well, now... Now, I... I don't care if you buy it or not. I just want you to get behind that wheel a minute. Oh, well... Mm -hmm. Did you ever see such a big steering wheel, Unc? No. What's the idea of such a big wheel, Mr. Gans? Uh, it's a racing-type wheel. Better control at high speeds, that's all. When you get around 95, 110, it's nice to have. Will she do 110 miles an hour? Just look at that speedometer, Sonny. Goes up to 120, doesn't it? Well, I generally stay around 35. <laughs> But of course, with all this power... You won't know you're over 30. It's that smooth. You don't say. And I'll tell you another thing. Women are crazy about this car. It does something to them. It does? Get out a minute, Leroy. Mr. Gans and I are talking business. You mean you're going to buy it, Uncle? We'll see, Leroy. We'll see. Hear that door? That's none of your cheap construction. Uh, you a bachelor, Mr. Gillerson? Uh, yes, I am. You could have a lot of fun with a car like this. <laughs> you think so, eh? I know. I tried it. <laughs> you sit behind that wheel there and you slide along nice and slow. And you see a friend, maybe, walking along. And you just go... <laughs> And when your friend looks around and gets a peek at this automobile, that's all, brother. Well, uh, yes. At the same time, I don't know. A man in my official position needs a car that's pretty conservative. You couldn't want a more conservative car than this. Black body, tan top. Of course, the white sidewall tires are a nice conservative touch. Oh, of course, yes. Uh, about how much would you want for this car, Mr. Gans, if I was uh, thinking of buying it? Commissioner, I'll tell you frankly, it would be worth something to have you as a customer. To you, fourteen ninety-five. Mm, fourteen hundred and ninety-five dollars? Yes, sir. Fourteen ninety-five takes it away. Gee. Oh, less, of course, whatever we can allow you on your present car. Oh, of course, the allowance. I never thought of that. Quite a substantial allowance on the late model cars, the forties and forty ones. Well, mine's a little older. All right, bring it in. I'll give you a figure. You can look at it right now. It's parked right out in front. Oh, that's the stuff. Uh, just press the button to open the door. That's it. You, uh, say your car's right out in front. Yeah, there she is. Uh -huh. Uh, there's two of them. Uh, you mean the one behind the jalopy? No. Well, I'm afraid it'll have to be largely a cash deal, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, well, I'll let you know in a day or so, Mr. Gans. Anytime. Anytime you're ready. Uh, maybe around the first of the week. Uh, Leroy, come along, my boy. Okay. Get your hands off that horn, you little weasel. All right, 
right, Leroy. Now, for heaven's sake, get your hair cut. Okay, will you come back and pick me up? In half an hour. Well, there's Judge Hooker coming out. Hi, Judge. Hello, Leroy. Good morning, Stockmorton. Well, good morning, Judge. About time you got your hair cut. Leroy is getting his hair cut. Get out, Leroy. Has Leroy an appointment? An appointment? A new custom Floyd's inaugurated for Saturdays. He's booked up salad till 3 o'clock. Well, for who does he think he is? Charles of the Ritz? I don't know, but he's getting away with it. You should have got here earlier. Well, I had a little trouble with my car. Been having a lot of trouble lately. So I stopped by Larry Gann's place to look at that car he has in the window. You seen that, Judge? You mean that flashy convertible? It's not so flashy. He wants a lot of money for it, though. I'm thinking it over. Gildersleeve, I don't understand you. You know perfectly well you can't afford to buy an automobile like that. Who can't? Stay out of this, Leroy. Who can't? You can't. I believe I know more about my own financial situation than you do, Horace. Gildersleeve, you can't afford the car you're sitting in. Oh, oh can't I? Leroy, climb back in here. <laughs> So loud, Leroy. Remember, you're in a bank. Well, what are we doing here? Never mind. Follow me. What would happen if we tried to hold up the place? Would alarms go off? Le- Leroy, not so loud, and don't ask him any questions. But where are we going? I've never been here before. The safe deposit vault. What for? Uh, uh, Want to look over some of my bonds. You mean you're going to buy the car, are you, Unc? No, now shut up. Uh, beg pardon? Oh, <laughs> Uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. If you'll just sign the slip, please. Hello there, Sonny. Hi. Who's he, a cop? No. He's a bank guard. Has he got a gun? I suppose so. Would he shoot? <laughs> Boy's never seen a safety deposit vault before. By the way, you're new here, aren't you? Yes, I just joined the, the organization this week. You know, by George, you look a lot like Don Gates, our chief of police here in Summerfield. Any relation? Oh, we're brothers. Well... Yes, Don went into public service, and I went into banking. Right this way, please, sir. Go ahead, Leroy. Follow the banker. Boy, look at that door. That must weigh a ton. Ten tons, to be exact. Gosh, it'd sure take a lot of dynamite to blast through that. You weren't thinking of blasting it, were you, Sonny? Oh, no, no, not me. (laughs) Gosh, a fellow reads your mind. (laughs) Your key, please, sir? Oh, yes, my key. There you are. Yes, sir. 863. Here we are. What does he use two keys for? So his right hand won't know what his left hand is doing. <laughs> Have to be careful in these places, Leroy. There you are, sir. If you'd care to step into one of our little rooms, just make yourself at home, sir. Uh, thank you. Close the door, Leroy. Why? I don't know. You're supposed to. Now, let's see what I've got here. Hmm. What's that? Appears to be an old laundry list. Certainly don't know what that's doing here. Ah. What's that? My membership in the National Geographic Society. <laughs> let's see now. Fire insurance policy, life insurance. Ah, here we are. Now what? These, my boy, are United States Treasury bonds. Been saving those for four years. What are you going to do with them? Never mind. I'm going to see how many I have first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. By George, they mount up, my boy. That's the beauty of regular saving. By before you know it, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yes, sir. Fourteen hundred and ninety-five takes it away. <laughs> What's the matter, Unc? Uh, nothing, my boy. I was just thinking. Gosh, I've got enough and more right here. Black body, tan top, and of course the white sidewall tires. <laughs> <laughs> Women are crazy about that car. It does something to them. What are you thinking, Unc? Well, uh, I was thinking, I was thinking, Leroy, that I've got a new automobile right there. Right there in that envelope. You mean you're going to buy it? Go ahead, Unc, buy it. Well... Fourteen ninety-five takes it away. Um, put those other things back in the box, Leroy, and let's get out of here quick. Yippee! Quiet. Do you want to rouse the guard? Here, close that box here. Let me. Wait a minute. What's this rolled up here? What? Let me see. Pull it out. 
got a rubber band around it. Yeah, give it to me. By George. I forgot I'd put it in here. I haven't seen that in 20 years. Well, what is it? My old college diploma. Nos Rector Universitatis Literarum. Promotor Rite Constitutus. In Virum Clarissimum. Rock Mortinum P. Gildersley. What's that? That's Latin, my boy. Latin. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. I remember the day I received that diploma from the hands of old Prexy himself. I remember some of the things he said to us in his commitments address. As I look out into this sea of faces, he said, and see you young men about to go out into the world. I venture the hope that that world will be a better place for your having been there. Just as State University is a better place because you were here. Old Prexy. He's gone now. By George, it brings back memories. Put back the bonds. You mean you're not going to buy the car? Put back the bonds, my boy. You're going to college. Put back the diploma, too. Ah, tell me one thing. What's that, my boy? What does it mean? What does what mean? What you were reading there. What it says on the diploma. My boy, you'll find that out when you go to college. The great Gildersleeve will be back again shortly. With quality spreads for bread in such big demand, it's only natural that more families should want to buy parquet margarine. Parquet is preferred by millions for its fresh, sweet flavor. There are other reasons, too, of course. First, it's such a fine energy food. Second, every pound of parquet is now fortified with 15,000 units of important vitamin A. And third, parquet is always made to crafts high standards of quality. So it's no wonder more and more families are demanding parquet margarine. Unfortunately, supplies are limited, and Kraft simply cannot make enough to satisfy everyone. So if your dealer is sometimes temporarily out of parquet, please be patient. Chances are that right soon he'll have a new supply. So keep asking for delicious, economical parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Ladies and gentlemen, I've only got a few seconds, but I want to say something about America's number one problem today, the housing shortage. The government estimates that more than two million veterans and their families will be looking for a place to live during 1946. Men who have fought our war come home and have to beg, not for food, but for a roof to shelter themselves, their wives, and their children. If you can rent a room to a veteran or part of your home to a veteran and his family, call the Veterans Service Center in your community. The need is terrific, believe me. Good night. Do you like your mustard mild, or do you like it with just a tingle of sharpness? Well, here's the good news I have for you lovers of good mustard. There's a craft quality mustard to please both tastes. The mustard with a mild, delicate spicing is golden craft salad mustard. And the one that's just a bit sharper is craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. They're both delicious in cooked foods, on frankfurters, and in tasty sauces. So be sure to ask for craft salad mustard and craft horseradish mustard. When you shop tomorrow. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.